Hey guys, it's Kat and I have a new tutorial for you on how to use Boolean operations in ZBrush. So why is that important, you ask? Well, I've got the Signet Ring here, which is one of the models that's included with ZBrush Core and ZBrush. But one of the things that uh, you might want to notice is that mine has a hollowed out portion behind it. And this is important, especially if you're sending something off to, say, Shapeways, where you know, the volume is money. And especially if you're working in gold or silver, you might want to hollow this back out to make it a little less heavy and also a little less expensive, maybe a lot less expensive. So we'll be using the included signet ring that comes with ZBrush. If you haven't already, save your work. If you're working on something, go ahead and save. You might uh, save your current subtools, or you can just use Command S or Control S on a PC to save. If you need to, pause and then come back and we'll start. All right, so now let's start by going up to the light box here at the top. Click on light box and look for the project tab. Under the project tab, there's a folder labeled jewelry. So double click on that and look for a jewelry signet ring. Now you will notice too that I actually have a signet ring that I've already done and saved so I can go back and reuse it over and over. So once you get a design you like, you could even save different sizes. You know, maybe save a lot of different sizes in one file and then load that project here in ZBrush. Uh, that can become something that's pretty handy. So double click on the signet ring. I'm not saving changes, but remember by clicking no here, you actually will lose anything you were working on before. So make sure that you've saved before you do this. I'll click no. And now here's the ring. Now let me change the color. Changing the color will make things a little bit easier later. And if you haven't loaded the MAH Dirty Blue, which is one that's popular with some jewelry folks, go ahead and load that in or choose maybe basic material. One of those will be fine. You just want something a little bit brighter than what we've been working with. So there it is in blue. Let's even look a little bit closer here, but you'll notice that there's some pixelization on this ring. It's just a really rough ring it's not sized to be the correct size at all. You'll notice at the top there's only 39,000 active points, which tells us that this is a very low resolution ring. Some of the tutorials you'll see on the internet, people are working up in the millions of points here, which uh, can cause a problem and also make your machine to go very, very slow. So if you ever do a Dynamesh operation and you see it crawling across the top here, you may be working at a resolution that's just too high. But we'll talk much more about that. Now, if I want to see the frame beneath this, on this vertical column right here, I can click on polyframe, and you'll see the, the mesh that's behind this model. And I can see from looking at this that it's a very coarse mesh. So if I were actually sculpting on this, I'd need a much finer mesh. But right now, it will do just fine for what we're working on. So I'll turn off the polyframe, so I'm just looking at the model again. And let's find the subtool palette over here on the right. Now, the subtool palette you can have multiple subtools that you're working on at the same time. And as we branch out and start adding things like a bezel on this ring or a flower, you'll notice that we might add extra subtools and then merge everything together later. But right now, I have the ring chosen up here at the top of the subtool palette. I want to look for the duplicate button down here, and now I have two rings. Before I go to the next step, though, I need to make sure that this original ring is visible. And if I look at this uh, subtool, on the right-hand side here, there's no little eyeball, and that eye indicates visibility. So make sure that that's turned on before we go to the next step. We have the bottom ring selected here, and I'm going to rename it so we keep them straight. Look for the rename button down here at the bottom and type core, or just something that lets you know that this is what we're going to be subtracting. Now we're looking for the icon that's in the third position. There's a downward arrow, one that looks like a MasterCard symbol, and a moon. The moon is subtract. So let's go ahead and change that right now because we know we'll be subtracting that eventually. Now we need to resize this core. So switch to the move mode, and you can do that by pressing W. That will bring up this new gizmo within ZBrush. If it's not visible, you can toggle that on and off with this icon or by pressing Y. 
If you hover over this little square in the middle, the yellow square, click and then drag, you can see that the ring is getting smaller on the inside. You'll also notice that this outer one is kind of darker. That indicates that this inner one is the active subtool. But let's turn on a mode that'll make this a little bit easier, which is transparency. So on this right hand side, you'll notice there's a transparency icon. Click on that, and now we can see through the ring. We know that our inner ring is active because it's blue, but the other one is ghosted out. So now we can see that we might want to increase the size of our inner core, and then maybe click and drag on this arrow up here to move it up further. So this will be a little bit thinner at the top, but we have a nice amount of metal here on the side. And you can also adjust that, so I could make this a little bit bigger and then move it down. But we're looking for just a nice amount of metal all the way around that top part. Now we'll switch to the side and hold the shift key to snap on a side view. And we still have our gizmo here. We're looking for the blue rectangle. You can click and drag that and we'll shrink our ring this direction, which is actually on the Z axis. Now we can see that we have an amount of metal up here all the way around. We could even move this up a bit and widen it a tad bit, but you just want a nice even amount up here. We'll worry about the measurements in a different video, but right now we're just practicing the skill. All right, so now that we have our ring, you know, equal amount of material pretty much all the way around, same on this view, that looks pretty good. So let's turn transparency off. So over in the right-hand drawer, turn off transparency. Make sure our core has a subtract symbol and we have our ring above it. Now let's switch over here to a mode called Live Boolean, which has a button up here at the top. Click on Live Boolean and see what happens. Now I can see the inner side of my ring. And what I'm looking for is that this part that's carved out starts about halfway up. So somewhere around in this area. If it's not, you can make the core active and even use the gizmo at this point to move this ring around just to kind of fine tune that. But again, make sure if we switch back to transparency, you'll see that that Boolean's not working now, but we can make sure that we have a, a good enough amount of material at the top here. And so it's kind of fine tuning between those two modes. Turn off transparency. We're just double checking, that looks good. Now we're ready to subtract. So make sure that the jewelry signet ring is the active item, and then you have core with the little moon on it. It doesn't matter if live Boolean is turned on or off at this point, um, it won't matter either way. And then I'm clicking and dragging over here, looking for the geometry palette and looking for Dynamesh. Now I can either click on the Dynamesh button it also might be hiding, so make sure that the Dynamesh subpalette is open. You can click on this once and then click again to re-Dynamesh. Oh, sorry, we forgot a step. So that wasn't necessary. Let's go to the subtool palette again. I need to merge down before that'll work. So make sure the top one is chosen. Click Merge Down. It's a little confusing because you'll see it looks like it added these together. I now have one subtool and these things are stuck together. So in some cases, I used to panic about that. If you've made a mistake, you can back out of this um, the way that you would do it. And let's practice real quick. I can click on this, this item here, look for the split option. Then I could split to parts and then say, always OK. And now I have my two layers back again. With that, I need to maybe click on these and make sure I've got them in the right order. Again, so the core, it's renamed it, but this is our core. We want to subtract it. And then now we're making sure that our top layer is active. Let's merge down. Clicking down here, merge down. And now we need to re -dynamesh. You can do that one of two ways. One is to go to the geometry palette, click Dynamesh and click it again. Or the shortcut is to hold down Command or Control on the background here, click and drag, and that will force a redynamesh. And you can see that the ring is now hollow. 
So a quick and easy way to, to smooth that up is to scroll down here to the deformation palette. Let's click and drag polish to maybe the two or the three mode. And there it is. So that cleaned it up pretty nicely. And we now have a signet ring that is hollow. So how can we add this to our light box? So the next time that we make a ring, we can start out with one that's already hollowed out. Well, to do that, go up to the file uh, palette up here or menu. We're going to do a save as. That saves a ZBrush project. Now I can go back to, let's see, my applications. Scroll down to the bottom, find ZBrush. We're looking for Z projects. There it is. When you find that folder, I'm looking for jewelry because I want that to be in the jewelry folder. And then I could call this hollow signet ring and hit return. And there we go. So the next time that we need a hollow ring to start out with, we can then go to our light box, go to project, double click on jewelry. And then we have a hollow signet ring. In fact, if you make it a color, it'll be different than the other one. Double click on that. Don't save changes. And now it's loaded my new signet ring that's hollow and I'm ready to start working. So that's a quick tip on how to hollow out your signet ring and stay tuned. I'll have some other videos with how to start decorating.